Hi, and welcome to the Athlete to Alumni webinar. This series will cover all things related to transitioning from the student athlete role to the alumni role and teach you what you can do to help guide this transition before you even graduate. Each week, we'll cover a specific career industry to connect you with alumni who have had successful trans transitions themselves and allow them to give you advice on what you will need to prepare for. I'm Megan Berezny, and I'll be the host for this series. This episode will cover the communications industry, and joining me today for this discussion is Molly Dreska. I'm super excited to have Molly here and jump into this episode, but first want to let Molly introduce herself really quick. Hi everyone, Megan, thank you so much for having me. Go Terps, woo! Um, as Megan said, my name is Molly Dreska. I played soccer at the University of Maryland from 2006 to 2011. Include the years to inform you that I was blessed to be at Maryland for five seasons instead of four, uh, though I did not see it as a blessing at the time. So I'm sure we'll get to that later, but very excited to be here. Awesome, Molly. Well, thank you. So hopefully, as everyone knows, as we've gone through this, this is, this is our last episode of the series. So we're going to break it down into three different segments. First, Molly's going to focus on her own story. Then she'll give advice um, back to the Terps now. And then we'll also touch on how to stay connected. So first up in segment one, Molly, we're just going to focus, like I said, on your story. So we know that each athlete's transition out of college and into their life after sport is very different. So tell us what has life after sport been like for you? Um, amazing, first of all. I'm currently the senior manager of communications for Major League Soccer. I know, again, you mentioned that there are many students that might be interested in working in communications after school. Uh, it's interesting because communications is an extremely broad field and there are many roles that bundle up into this category. And during my 10 years working in sports so far, I've been very fortunate to have tried many of them, ideating and crafting web content, running social media accounts, producing video segments. I was even on broadcast analyzing soccer matches for a small period of time. Um, and then I was fortunate to work for a professional team in Major League Soccer called Sporting Kansas City a federation in the US women's national team who won the World Cup in 2015 while I was working for them, which was amazing, and now a professional league in Major League Soccer. So my transition was a bit all over the map. I graduated, hung up the cleats, moved halfway across the country for an unpaid internship, got a job working for a professional men's soccer team in Kansas City, and then a women's professional soccer team was coming to Kansas City. So I, of course, had to go to open tryouts. I was invited to participate on the team as a practice player. So in 2014 and 2015, I was working full-time for the men's professional soccer team. And I was a practice player for the women's professional soccer team in the same town. Uh, shameless plug, FC Kansas City, that team, uh, the women's pro team in the National Women's Soccer League at the time, won the championship full seasons as a practice player. So I feel I had a lot of pull those years. Um, but I was really truly the definition of living the dream. Like it was my dream, but it was just an incredible few years of just getting to do everything I, I really dreamed of. But looking back, when I evaluate my path, I would liken it to a leaf. Like wherever the wind blows, that's where I was going. So I say that because if you're a senior and you did not start focusing on your career and you're graduating in a few weeks, and this is the first thing you're doing, starting to listen to some of these podcasts through Marilyn Made. pause, take a deep breath, <laughs> you are going to be okay. I am proof of that strategy. Now, for those of you that are freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, you're certainly doing the right thing if you're participating in Marilyn Made. Had I made those types of commitments when I was in school, perhaps I would be a young executive by now instead of a senior manager, right? We're talking hundreds of thousands of Dollars. So keep that in mind when you're deciding how to prioritize your time right now. Awesome. Thank you. I, I already know you had such an extensive background and you're going to continue to drop gems throughout this um, episode here, but we're going to get into everything that you just mentioned a little bit um, later as we go through this as well. Um, but just to kind of kick us off on a positive note, talk to us about one post-graduation accomplishment that you made. Obviously you just listed a, a bunch, but something that sticks out to you, whether it's related to your career or just something about your transition in general. I would say turning my passion for soccer into a fulfilling career. I didn't get to play in a World Cup, but I got to work one. And I've gotten to work for a professional team, our country, and now a professional league in the sport that I love really yeah that's that that's definitely a good one that's awesome 
All right, and then on the flip side of that, um, how about a big, one of the biggest challenges that you faced after Maryland and how you overcame it? Oof. There will definitely always be challenges in our lives, right? Like the last year, I can't even imagine what you as athletes have experienced in the last 14 months. But what I will say about being a college athlete, it gives us this certain type of resilience. You might not realize it now, but there. And so the hardest challenge I have faced in my life outside of losing a loved one is losing soccer. Losing soccer the years I was injured, losing soccer when I graduated Maryland, and then even a, another time when I retired for the second time. My identity was my sport. I hope I want, I would imagine that speaks to a lot of you. And for that reason, just being injured brought some dark, dark dates. And I suspect many of you listening really have had that feeling. Um, and it, maybe it wasn't an injury. Maybe it's just this last few months. Many of you have been stripped of your sport for a period of time in the last year, um, some longer than others. And it's just really, really hard. So the resilience that you're building up this year, that's with you for life. The extra time you're spending getting to know your teammates or getting more involved in Maryland need or getting into politics. This is all with you for life. So do the work now and little hint, some of it you're already doing just by holding yourself accountable for being a good teammate, right? And so your biggest challenge post Maryland, it won't even log on the Richter because you've gone through so much being a student athlete and you've overcome so much. That's awesome. I think that that's something that's so important for students at any age to remember. I think a lot of them come out and are, you know, overwhelmed with all these different transitions, but a lot of what you're doing in athletics is going to cross over. And, and, you know, we see that through you and, and through a lot of our other episodes as well. So that's a great reminder. So you mentioned um, that you took the chance on yourself and moved across the country. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about what these social transitions were like for you. So what was it like to not be a member of a team anymore? And how did you learn to make friends and, and build relationships in, in a new area? Yeah, well, you're not, you're not part of a team that, that suits up for matches anymore, right? But you can always find teammates. And I think we need to. It's innate for us as athletes to find other people that enjoy the same things we do. So find your teammates, whether it's at your new company, in the industry you want to go into, former Turks, sign me. I'm a free agent when it comes to meeting new people. I love that. Get my contact info, information from Megan. I'll share it at the end of this call. But one of the many assets of being a part of a team for so long is our ability to form fast friendships and meaningful ones. Awesome. I think that's great advice. I love the, the free agency there. That's a, definitely a good way to put it. Um, all right, so we're going to focus a little bit as we wrap up this session on or this segment on uh, time management. So what was it like to own your own schedule after college? Uh, did you continue to exercise? Obviously, you, you played, but you know, beyond that and now, and then how did how did how did you and how do you keep your time management skills up? This question for the win, Megan, and I'm going to I'm going to tweak it a tiny bit um, <laughs> because well, being a student athlete is an incredible opportunity. I think we hopefully can all recognize that while we're there. One element that really blew my mind post playing was decision making. As a student athlete, we think we're making a lot of decisions, but a lot of the times we are told what to eat, what to wear, when to be where. So in college, my decisions a lot of the times were yes, no. Like, will I show up today? Yeah. Like, will I be the hardest working player on the field today? Yes, absolutely yes. But I never asked why. I just, I knew I had to be the best, but I never really followed that up and said, why do I want to be the best? And I think it took me a long time to start asking that. And like, I have to shout out my, my first boss here, Rob Thompson from Sporting Kansas City. Um, he did not micromanage and I hated him for it. I was a fish out of water. I wanted him to tell me what to do, what he wanted me to do on a certain assignment, but instead he stepped back and he gave me this blank canvas to create. And I'm here today because he gave me the freedom to grow, to learn, but most importantly, to, to have the confidence to use the skills that I, we have acquired through a lifetime of playing sports. And so I'm not sitting here and telling you, oh, talk back to your coaches, but just be curious. If I could go back, I wish I had asked more questions and been more curious when I was a student athlete versus experiencing all of the questions during you know, my first career. That's awesome. Thank you for that. 
So we're gonna roll into segment two now. Um, and this segment, again, is gonna focus on the student athlete story. So just as an alumni, giving some advice back down to the students. So being an alumni now, what are some of the things that student athletes need to know to make their transition more smooth? I wish we were in a live, uh, live setting right now. So I could see kind of the reactions and read the room <laughs> on this one, because I'm gonna take this question very practically and then roll into the philosophical, which is like my usual wheelhouse. Um, track changes. If you wanna go into communications, learn how to use track changes while you're in college. If you are sitting here laughing because you know what this function is, I applaud you. I embarrassingly did not. Seven years into my career, I started at MLS after having been with sporting for seven years. And I was asked to edit documents and I was just making changes, uh, just typing in without anybody being able to see. So taking a step back, track changes is a function on Word and it, it highlights in red writing um, the changes that you're making to a document when you're sharing it with other people. It's really important if you're in comms, a lot of people need to have eyes on these, these elements and press releases and different documents that you're putting together. So little, little things like that, when you, when you have the time, network with people and, and learn about what they do and, and the, the things that they use on a day-to-day -day basis, because my mind was blown with track changes. Um, it, it, it really is what it says though. It's, it's tracking in red writing, the changes you're making to a document. Um, and now of course, for the philosophical, um, I would say as student athletes, we have an incredible amount of transferable skills. Identify what yours are and use them to your advantage and just be confident. You know, we know so much more than we think we do just from having been a part of a team. I love that. That's definitely really important. And, and you kind of hit both sides there, whether they're interested in income or not. So thank you. Um, so gonna focus a little bit on career readiness now. So obviously you mentioned um, earlier about Maryland Made, but we weren't an established unit when you were at Maryland. So how did you get ready for your career while being a student athlete? Did you utilize any university connections, you know, faculty, the career center, any resources um, while you were there? And if you didn't, what did you wish you would have done? Um, I did none of the things. <laughs> and I say that because that's my truth. I'm not proud of it. But I want you to know, I said it earlier, if you have not yet been putting in the work, you are going to be fine. But those that are taking advantage of Maryland, you will be ready. And it's just like, it's like sports, right? The more work you put in now, the more prepared you're going to be. That's, that's it. So thank you, Megan. Thank you, Tim. Everybody shout out Maryland Made. It is so incredible what you all are working on. And I hope that you're seeing a lot of success with, with students joining and participating. Thank you for that. Um, all right, so now we're gonna focus a little bit more on communications and I know you touched on it in your first answer, but we do have a lot of students who are interested in comm. And like you said, you can go a kind of a whole different lot of di uh, directions with it, but what specific advice would you give students who are interested in a career in communications? Call me. <laughs> Seriously, I touched on it earlier again, but communications, it's so broad. So. That's what I did. I, I was in college and I, I picked a major that was that was broad. I said, I'm going to major in business and I'll work in business. But I had no idea what that actually meant, right? Literally no clue. And and that's, a, that's okay. It's okay that you don't know what you want to be when you grow up. I'm still figuring it out. But call me because now I've been doing this for 10 years. I've done a whole bunch of different things in communications. And if you think that's a route you want to go, we'll chat through it and figure out what your own personal goals are. And then we'll get you on the right path for you, right? Because there's social media, there's web content, there's PR, which is what I do now, which is telling the stories of the athletes on the fields, the athletes behind the jerseys. That's one of my favorite things personally, but I've done a lot of the other elements. So I can at least help connect you to somebody that's maybe if you want to get into social, doing social media versus PR. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I, ho I hope that that's the one piece they get out of this because it's definitely important. We've had almost everybody who came on say that you should network. So uh, there you go. Now you have one, one connection already. Um, all right, so you touched on this earlier, but while you were at Maryland, you um, struggled through injury. So you tore your ACL. So talk to us um, about that. How did you stay positive through that journey? And did you do anything while you were recovering to help advance your career? This one gives me all the feels, like feels like it's happening right now when I talk about it. Um, 
for those of you that haven't been injured, I just I'm elated for you. Amazing. For those that have, I'm going to real talk so hard on this one because I did not stay positive during the journey. You can ask anybody that you know that might have played with me, any coaches that might have been at Maryland at the time, if you know them. But uh, again, shouting out uh, former Maryland soccer coaches, Brian Penske and John Morgan. Um, they requested I go to a sports psychologist to help me cope with my injury. And at that time, we just weren't talking about mental health. And it's so, so, so important that mental health is a part of training now. Just like we train our bodies, we have to train our minds. And I am so grateful that it seems like that's happening now in college, right? And in, and in youth sports and people are having conversations and we're, we're starting to train our minds. And it, it really does feel like we're, this is a bit of destiny that the first week of May, Mental Health Awareness Month, and uh, you're asking that question, but feel very strongly about this. Um, and, you know, wish I had guidance when I was early in my career that would have helped me through my, my injury journey um, a little better. Thank you for that. And thank you for being so open and honest about it. We appreciate it. And like you said, it's a, the perfect time to share that. Um, all right, so we did touch on this in the beginning, but looking over your resume, you obviously have a wide range of experience in the communications field. So how did you find your passion for what you do now? And how do you stay encouraged to continue to navigate the next steps of your career? I'm a firm believer in choosing a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Cliche, I know. Um, but there are loads of professions out there and I just we can all find one that gets us excited to wake up in the morning. And so I can sit here and say, I've never woken up a day in my life and not wanted to go to work in the morning. And to me, that is success. That might not be for everybody, but to me, that's what success is. And uh, so, with, so with that said though, I, I recently read an article titled, Finding Your Passion is uh, Terrible Advice or something similar to that, it was in Forbes. And I was shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, I've been telling people this for years. Why is it bad advice? But the gist of the article was that sometimes we have to learn to love something. So for me, the stars aligned and I was able to stay in, in soccer and the transition was, was seamless. But there's so many other careers out there that I don't even know that exists that might make me even more happy than I am at now with my job. So that's what I mean when I say be curious. Um, we all might think, hey, we want to work in sports, but it's weekends, it's nights, it's you know, traveling all over. So if that's not what you want, maybe sports actually, even though it was good for you for college, it might not be your next step. So don't count anything out. When people have suggestions, go for it, try it. Find out what you don't like. It's easier to find out what you don't like and then move along to figuring out what you do. I love that. And I think it goes, it even goes back to one of your answers earlier about how, you know, you can take the skills that you're learning with anything and, and transfer them over. So, you know, whether it's something you don't like, but you might get that skill that will help you reach the next level of what you do like. So I think that's great advice. Thank you for that. All right. So we're going to roll into segment three here, our last segment, and this will focus on staying connected. So how can student athletes stay connected to UMD after graduation? Okay, this is going to be my favorite, my favorite part of the podcast. I can feel it. Um, okay, we're going to do an experiment. So because we're athletes, we love a good challenge, right? I mean, I do. I hope everyone listening loves a good challenge. I don't know how you made it this far in athletics if, if you don't love the challenge. So for me, networking was the hardest concept for me to grasp. When I was in your seat, every educator, coach, parent, peer, like told me to go to networking events. I had so many incredible incredibly talented professionals speaking to our team when I was at Maryland or at a work function when I was young in my career. So many would say, here's my contact information, please reach out. And, and I never did. I wasn't scared. Like you can probably tell by just hearing me speak for a little bit that I love people. I can talk for days and making new friends is my life. So why didn't I reach out? And I had to ask myself this, it's back to that why question, right? In my mind, reaching out to somebody to network felt like a one-way street, that I had nothing to contribute to the team. And now that I'm 10 years removed, I can truly sit here, stand here and say, like, you have everything. You have everything to contribute. The best feeling that I've experienced post-graduation is when 
a former intern of mine earns a full-time position or a colleague of mine in the industry is hiring and Tim and Megan have introduced me to the perfect candidate to write a recommendation for. It's the best feeling and so many executives are gonna tell you that. So don't think that the people you're networking with aren't gonna get as much from you as you're gonna get from them because it is so mutually beneficial. That's awesome, that's that's great advice. Like I said, every single person has come on and said to network. So uh, thank you for that. We can definitely see the, the importance and hopefully see it from you know a different perspective now. Um, so you talked about what in general students should do. So talk to me a little bit about um, how you personally stay connected to UMD. I know you are involved in our impact program. So talk to us about your experience with the impact program and what that has been like for you. I will get to the impact program in a second. I realized I said I was going to have a challenge and I didn't oh. get you one. So I'm going to go back, back to that initial question of how students can stay connected to UMD after graduation. And to your point about everyone coming on here saying network, it is. It's reaching out, it's connecting, but don't wait until after you graduate, right? Start now. So the challenge is the president of the University of Maryland, Daryl Pines, has a very special connection to Major League Soccer. So my question is, what is it? If you do not know, use your connections at Maryland to find out. When you reach out to me to connect about jobs and communications or a career in sports, mention the connection. That is the golden rule of outreach and finding a common ground, right, with the person that you're connecting with. So do that. I hope you accept my challenge. Um, and then the second golden rule, you don't have to do this for me, but handwritten thank you notes to anyone that you get connected with. It goes such a long way. I don't take that lightly. I they're they're typically in my desk, but I pulled them out for the purposes of this. But I have them right here. If somebody reaches out to me and says, I need a strong entry level position, I go into this file and say, Oh, you know, this person really impressed me when we did an informational interview. And I have it right here. I bet you so many other executives have a similar stash of those thank you cards because you saw it. It wasn't that thick. Like they're they're kind of few and far between. So those would be the, the two, the two rules. Um, I know I ramble, apologies, but we'll move on to the, the impact program was the, was the next question, right? Yeah. So, well, first That's of great. all, thank you for that. I love, I love the challenge and you'll have to let <laughs> Tim and I know, uh, who actually ends up making the connection and reaching out to you. But yeah, so the, the next part was just a little bit more focus on your specific, um, ways that you stay connected. And then again, to talk to us about, um, the impact program, what that has been like and what you have gained from it and what you think that your mentee has gained from it as well. Impact program, I could not speak more highly of. Megan, you know that I've told you, I've told him. I wish we had this program when I was in school. Um, my accountability partner, Taylor Ligori, if you do not know Taylor, you need to introduce yourself. She is absolutely a rising star. As a sophomore, Taylor is the captain of, a captain of the softball team and a member of the Leadership Academy. She contacted me to let me know both of those things in like, within a five day span. So it was extremely exciting. She's had, you know, through all of the challenges that this year has brought, she's had these two massive accomplishments, just a complete boss babe. But I bring it up because Taylor would be a great connection for you as well if you haven't met Taylor yet, right? So if you're a captain of your team and just wanna bounce ideas off of someone, Taylor would be a great person from that. If you're considering applying to the leadership program next year, Taylor would be a great person to connect with on that. I. I can't recommend enough the, the impact program to, to current student athletes, but also former athletes get involved. You know, I'm going to be reaching out to sending this around to all my friends uh, and other athletes that I went to school with just to make sure we keep recruiting some, some more um, former athletes as well. Uh, Cause you know, I got to throw in a corny joke. We got to have each other's shells. Um, one's a turbo, always a turbo. Right? <laughs> Couldn't get through this without, without a corny joke, of course. <laughs> No, I love that. And I, I think you bring up a good point too about like peer to peer connections, because I think a lot of people get intimidated by networking through, you know, reaching out to executives like yourselves. But you even if you are uncomfortable getting used to doing it with teammates or other student athletes so is definitely a, a good way to start. But again, you know, the, the more connections we can make the the Terp alumni are so excited. And as we've seen, you know, willing to give back. So making sure that students tap into that a little bit. Two more shout outs yeah. because the, the individuals that actually told me about the in impact room are also student athletes at Maryland uh, from the women's soccer team, Hope and Alexis. So two other incredible student athletes that you just have right right near you that you should be reaching out with and, and connecting because you know they were the ones that informed me of all the good work being done by 
Megan and Tim and the team. Awesome. Thank you. And, and thank them. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be listening. Um, all right. So as we close out, I just want to give you the opportunity to give one final gem. I know that like I said, you've given a lot of different information and, and all that today, but just want to give you an opportunity of whether it's advice that you wish you had or anything like that, just want to give you a space to, to allow you to say that now. Okay. Hardest question, right? Okay. Prioritize people. I would say being a student athlete is a lot of work. I spent a lot of years during my soccer career at Maryland, just putting my head down and grinding. I was gonna be the hardest working person on the team. I think if they still have top Terps listed at the varsity team house, I got that award a lot, but sometimes we just need to pick our heads up. We can be the hardest worker and the best teammate and the most strategic. It, being a hard worker doesn't mean that you are not good at these other things, right? And so it doesn't need to be the either or. So commit to your craft, but always, always, always find time for people and for learning. I love that. That's, that's, that's a great one. Definitely different from what others have given. So it gives you a lot of perspective. Um, all right, Molly. Well, that is all that I have for you today. I am so happy that we had you on. I think you gave great um, advice for anyone, whether they're interested in communications or not. Um, so as we close, just want to give you the opportunity. I know you're tapped into social media pretty well. Um, just a chance to drop your socials or how people can um, connect with you. Yes, you can actually, this might be rogue, but you can find all my information online on my cell phone. So I feel good about giving it here. It's, write this down, 516-567-4468. I have a website, mollydreska.com, and it has all that information there, which is why it's easy for me to, to share with you here. Um, we get a lot of email, right? So differentiate yourself, uh, reach out, and, and we'll find some time to connect. Uh, my email is also molly dot dreska at mlssoccer.com so double s look forward to hearing from you don't forget about that connection make sure that when you're reaching out you're letting her know about that well thank you molly so much i'll make sure to put your email in the youtube um, bio as well so if people want to just click on that right away and um, as we continue to post this on our social media and our podcast and all of that make sure to continue to circulate your your um, information but Molly, thank you so much. I know that if the students were here, they'd be screaming thank you as well, but I'm really excited to see who reaches out and you know what people can gain from this. So thank you so much for your time. And we're gonna close out this episode of Athlete to Alumni. Thank you so much for having me, Megan. And I feel like I should say, go DC United, woo! <laughs> Our MLS team in Maryland.